What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. And this, for the fourth week, we are giving you our top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for. No new comics. New comics are on the way. But we've been doing this four weeks now. And from the viewer's opinion, this show, this video is definitely here to stay. Wouldn't you say, Jack? Absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been tuning in, checking out the video, all the feedback we've gotten. Um, you guys have spoken. This is definitely going to be a mainstay here on the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. This is the living list. This list is constantly growing. We add 10 new books each week. This week, we're coming with volume four, hitting you with the now 40 titles to be on the lookout for, lots of back issues to be checking out, and some, Brian, have already started spiking. Yeah, so definitely this is here to stay. And even better, further on down the line, a few weeks, we're going to have a special announcement about these lists to make as well. But for now, let's get into this week's list, starting with number 10. In our 10th spot this week, we get that new Avengers number 7. This gives us that first appearance of the Illuminati, right, Jack? Absolutely. And this is one of those team appearances. If you're a new viewer of Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, you may not be aware of this, but if you're a regular Bolo show watcher from way back, you'll know I hate team appearances. Um, most often they don't amount to anything, but there are exceptions. And when those exceptions occur, I'm actually real bullish on them. And this is one of the biggest there is because the Illuminati is beyond cool it is what you think it is it's this group of powerful figures in the marvel universe uh working together behind the scenes uh, it is made for the mcu and when you look at the addition of uh the fantastic four property as well as the x-men property coming into the fold it really opens the door for the storyline the rumors are already out there this book is already spiked up to around 15 dollars. but you know what brian this is one of my favorite books to find in dollar bins because it's still out there and it's a book that if you do enough hunting online and if you pay it enough attention to online listings you can find these books for a cover price or lower yeah great book and great team and it's referenced a lot with throughout pop culture right absolutely yeah it's it's, it's definitely a a term and an idea of a secret society that will resonate with people they'll immediately understand and at number nine this week hold on put a pause Real quick, before we give you number nine, all the sports fans out there, everyone knows this video is coming up, and the same night, the NFL draft is kicking off. So I want to give a shout out to Redskin Nation, HTTR, but either way, we're getting into that number nine spot with Batman number 666, and this is also, it's got the origin of Damian Wayne, right? Plus, there's a bunch of minor appearances. Right. Here's the thing. We've talked about this as a living list. So you're going to see certain themes and certain things that like we really feel strongly that people should be paying attention to for the future of the back issue market. And one of those things that we talked about previously, I think the book had like a number one spot on a week's list. We're talking about Damian Wayne. Damian Wayne is really the future of DC Comics. He's the future of the Bat family. And because of that, we're very bullish on all things Damian Wayne. And after you look at that first appearance, whether or not you talk about cover A or the Kubert variant, you know, the next logical thing to look at is the first time Damian Wayne puts on the cowl. And this future story right here, Batman 666, gives you that. So you're getting kind of like, you, you call it an origin. It's, it's, it is, it's, but it's like, it's like a future telling origin of how Damian goes from the Damian that we first initially meet all the way to the Damian that we kind of expect to see in the future. So this book, I think, whenever it happens, and I feel like it's only a matter of time before DC Comics, in continuity, puts Damien in the role of Batman. And whenever that happens, this book is going to be as hot as they come. But regardless, whether Damien shows up in a movie or a TV show, just as Robin, this book is always going to be attached to the lore of Damien Wayne, and it will rise as the first appearance does. Coming in next on the list, we get Marvel Team Up number 65. This has a bunch of first appearances as well. Some of those kind of villain or antagonist first appearances, such as Ar Arcade and a few others. But tell us more about this one, Jack. Yeah, there are some, some new characters introduced, but there is also a character who's existed in Marvel Comics, but is introduced in the United States for the first time, and that is Captain Britain. Now, 
Brian and I, if you've watched us on the channel, we're not big believers in Captain Britain and his role in the MCU in the future. But you know what? It really doesn't matter what we think. The, that's one of those things that we've noticed as we've talked about our kind of disbelief in Captain Britain is that you guys don't always agree with us on that one. And that's something that I've taken note on. People seem to like Captain Britain. People seem to believe that Captain Britain is a character to pay attention to. But when I start looking into Captain Britain, Something doesn't make sense to me, Brian. And I know when we talk about first appearances and things like that, I know I can be a bit too logical, but uh, it really doesn't make sense to me why everyone chases the British appearance of Captain Britain. And the reason why is because when you compare that to other first appearances, uh, where a character may first appear in a UK publication, something like Transformers has a few of those, it tends to be the U.S. appearance that everyone gravitates to. Another example would be Doctor Who. If you were to say, go after Doctor Who's first appearance, most people are going for the Marvel Comics Presents issue. And it's because of accessibility. It's because of um, the way that these books are kind of made present to us versus these hard-to-find foreign issues. Foreign comics tend to fit into a niche all in uh, to its own. And we've seen the rise in popularity in those in the last few years. But, you know, I think with Captain Britain, I've, I've never understood when we talk about Captain Britain, why everyone only talks about that UK issue. This is the first appearance of, his, of, of him in the United States. To me, it's really, it's the first appearance of what is the modern Captain Britain that we will see if we see him in film one day and this is the book if you believe in captain britain really i feel like it has the largest potential for roi it's undervalued and it's not looked at as a first appearance when maybe it should be yeah you mentioned uh british comics when uh when i lived over in Heidelberg, germany as a kid we were over in london and i bought some british comics and i don't know if they were all like that but they're almost like treasury size edition yes and the paper is really thin um and it was you know I wasn't so much as a collector then, just more reading it. But <laughs> it was funny because we were in Britain visiting a nanny. So I, it's a little sidebar story here, but it's kind of funny because, uh, yeah, my parents put my ass doing this. But one of the things in like Piccadilly Circus and um, around London, we were there visiting um, our, our nanny at the time's family. But a lot of places, there was a lot of those joke shops or gag shops, right? So I, it was the first time my parents let me buy some stink bombs. And we were staying in this place at the Union Jack Hotel is the hotel we stayed at. And we were walking in the lobby. And I wanted to try a stink bomb out. So I threw it right down in the lobby. And it like cleared out the whole freaking lobby. And my parents were so embarrassed. My freaking mom just like smacked me right in the face at that time. And um, yeah, so that was my first experience with stink bombs and and my first experience with uh, with uh, British or British comic books. But either way. Uh. <laughs> then number seven, this is a book that's no stranger to anyone, but still deserves a spot on this list. And we're talking about Spawn number one. Spawn, yes, there's a lot of copies out there. And this newsstand is the one that a lot of people are hunting for. But tell us more about this book. Well, you know, this is one I think that there could be some um, negative feedback to. Some people may say, you know, Spawn number one, you're going to say things like the high print run. There's no doubt you're talking about a million print run, you know, and then you may say, well, you know, we've seen this book go up and down. Absolutely. But that's kind of the point. Right before the COVID-19 situation, this book was seeing prices of around $40. We had started to talk about how, um, the new generation of comic book collectors had to have this in their collection. And we saw the previous standard on this book of about 20 to $25 start to escalate. And when I got back into comics around, uh, you know, 10 years ago, this was about a 10 to $15 book that we frequently found for $5 and below. We found these books all the time for three to $5. And I think a lot of the judgment on this book comes from that time period where a lot of us remember seeing this book regularly trading hands for $5 and not thought of as something really of value. And Today, this book is looked at differently. Spawn is one of the most collected runs. Some of those rare late, late printed issues that people are chasing. The only reason those have value is because people are collecting the run. And in order to collect the run, you also got to have that number one. So number one is just always going to be important. Coming in at number six. Now, number seven, we talked about a book that a lot of people are aware of. This is a book, if you're a Ninja Turtle fan, you're definitely aware of. But I think it's also 
under the radar for a lot of people. They don't understand this book. And it's an Archie book, but we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one. This is from 1988. There was another n number one that came in 89, but this is the one that came in 1988. And it's got two great first appearances in it in Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh, no, Brian. It's got three because you <laughs> cannot forget Krang. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing about this book. And it's really, I think, one of the most underrated books in comics right now. It's had moments where it's kind of risen to that $15 to $20 level raw, and it will still see near mint sales there for the people who know. See, if you label this book properly, if you put Bebop, Rock City, Krang, Archie, number one, near mint, you can charge $20 for this book. But this is a book I regularly find where in people's mind, they're equating it to the same as the 1989 series. They're equating it to the same as the movie special, the one shot. And they're just looking at it as a few dollar uh, kids cartoon series. This is the book also, and we've talked about this with books like X-Men Adventures. I believe nostalgia is going to keep this book important. This is also, you could argue, the first appearance of the animated universe that we now have seen stand the test of time. Yeah. Maybe more prevalent than the actual film franchise. And that's why you have Bebop, Rocksteady, and Krang. These were characters created for the cartoon. And they show up in this comic. They've become such regular characters in the series. We're still seeing them show up in the IDW series. We've seen them show up in the last feature film. So these are characters that are, are going to be some of like the most important and major villains in this series. I think for that reason, three first appearances, one issue. you got to pay attention to that. Add in the fact that it's the first appearance of really – TMNT animated in general, I think that gives it value. Add in the fact that it's a kid series and you know the way those were treated, those Archie books from back in the day. This book is regularly when I find it in the back issue bin. I'll find it in dollar bins all the time. Making our way down the bottom half of the list at number five, we have Journey to Mystery Annual Number One, Jack. Well, you know what, Brian? Here's the thing. If you really want to make that ROI, right? You've got to look ahead. You've got to look to the future. And in order to do that, sometimes it's important to look to the past. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking this back. Now, this isn't a cheap book. We're not we're finding taking it way dollar. back. We're taking it back like Coy Feldman and Goonies with his wish. <laughs> so I'm taking it back. I'm taking them all back. Because you, you're not finding this in dollar bins. Um, this is definitely, definitely a key. But it's a minor key. It's not a book you're seeing on everybody's wall. It's a book that you can find at surprisingly um, moderate pricing in mid-grade and low-grade. It's accessible and available right now on eBay. Um, and remember, guys, we have that article on simplemanscomics.com. You can get, oh, click the eBay links. You'll have access to all that information. And this is, of course, the first appearance of Hercules. Now, when you look at where we're going with the MCU, it's very hard to just necessarily project Hercules, but it's a character that has been talked about, has been rumored. There's been past casting discussions. He has been a member of the Avengers at many different times in history, and he has been involved in some of the storylines that have been rumored to be coming up in the future. But the reality is it's just an interesting character that Marvel hasn't used who could add a different wrinkle to the MCU. And at, if you're going to go ahead and, and, and kind of like take a shot for a, investing in a future character, you've got to step out on a limb. So this is one that I look at and go, well, if Hercules gets cast and it's a major character, if we were to say uh, there was past rumors of The Rock, if you, I don't think that that's something that's going to feasibly happen. But if you were to have Dwayne The Rock Johnson cast as Hercules tomorrow in the MCU, you would suddenly – have people running to that book. This is not a modern book. This is not a book you can just go easily grab up copies. So you need to be deliberate. There's a couple books on this list and we're gonna talk about them literally back to back that if you want to get involved in, you have to be deliberate about it and you have to take your time because you're not gonna be able to run out when some announcement happens and just clear the internet. The next on the list, we get X-Men number 10. This is volume one, issue number 10. What do we know about this one, Jack? Well, again, this is, fits into that same category. Everything we just talked about, Hercules. 
we're going to talk about a character who's a little bit different from everything we've seen in the MCU, but a character who connects through storylines with a lot of characters that already exist in the MCU. And we're talking about Kazar. Now with Kazar, you're talking about essentially like a George of the Jungle character, if you're not familiar, but I know many of you are, and there's a lot of different ways that people ha have been. Um, Kazar, of course, comes from a place called the Savage Land. And the Savage Land has been always kind of a cult popular area of the Marvel Universe. This book is also the first appearance of the Savage Land. And if you really think about this, he, they could do Savage Land without Kazar. There's ways to do that. Um, I think if they do the Savage Land, Kazar has to be in it. But they do Kazar in a minor role. But this book could still be valuable because of it being the first appearance of the Savage Land alone. And we've seen through history, this is an X-Men book. And this plays heavily into X-Men lore. But also, during the cartoon years in the two, early 2000s, we saw Spider-Man, Venom, Deadpool all have important stories in Savage Land. So there's the possibility for that. And Spider-Man really has had multiple kind of run-ins and, and events in Savage Land. And there could always be that aspect within the Sony universe. So I think that this is a character uh, really to keep an eye out for, and one that we're going to build on in the future because we're going to talk about other um, characters related to this character. Yeah, that's a great book. And also, before we get into the bottom three on here, you were talking about, we've talked a lot about the MCU, and you just talked about X-Men, just talked about Savage Land. You, the viewer, comment down below, who would you like to see to direct the movie that introduces the mutants, X-Men, into the MCU? So let us know what that is in the comments, and then we'll feature some of those comments in next week's video. I'll let you know who my director pick would be, especially uh, PG-13, push the envelope. I like Antoine Fuqua. That's who I'd like to see. Great, especially with action movies. Want to see him direct that, introduce those X-Men into the MCU. But do us a favor, comment down below, and we'll put those comments up in next week's video. But now, let's bring up number three. And number three, we're going back over to the Gotham Batman universe, and we're going with Batman number 357. What we just talked about on Trey Paperback show, that death of this character, but here we have that first appearance of Jason Todd. Not only Jason Todd, but you also get his mother and father, correct? That's right. And here's the thing about this book. Again, this is a living list. We're going to build on themes. You notice a couple things. Number one, the Bat family is a great investment. Um, you know, Batman is a tough play, obviously, 1939 first appearance, um, you know, out of almost everyone's price range. But there's still a lot of kind of piggybacking off Batman you can do with the Bat family. And eventually, as we've talked about, if they really want to progress Batman as a character, they're going to have to kind of increase the role of the surrounding Bat family. And they've done a good job in the creation of these characters. And an example of that is the Red Hood. The Red Hood has become really cult popular with modern comics fans. And because of that, I think there's a lot of potential in the future. And we've seen whatever this character has been used, something as simple as a variant cover or inclusion in a video game, we've seen the kind of spike in price of that first Red Hood. But as that goes, so will this one. This is the first appearance of Jason Todd. Obviously, the kind of character appearance is always more attractive than the person appearance. And we've seen that, whether it's Eddie Brock and Venom, Cletus Cassidy and Carnage, um, and so on and so forth throughout the future. But this book is still going to have value um, because – more than those characters, he really still was Jason Todd for a long time prior to becoming Red Hood, and he became Robin before he became the Red Hood. So, you know, this to me is one of several books that are really key in the Red Hood's lineage. So if you're going to really be bullish on the Red Hood, if you're going to get involved, I think there is no better place to start than right here. And then at number two, this is a book that might surprise you hitting the number two spot, but I know exactly why it's in here, because the author of this book is one of the hottest authors out right now, especially when it's coming to option properties. We're talking about Jeff Lemire, we're talking about Gideon Falls. Yeah, this list, you know we love indie comics here at Simple Men's Comics, but it's really tough with this list to project independent comics right now. Um, you know, independent comics really are driven by the option, and there's certain jump-off points where you can sell the book and make the proper ROI. So you're talking about when the option news hits, which with Gideon Falls, and which with many of the books that are dipping low right now, those option news have already hit. So now you're in the waiting game, waiting to see how something's going to get developed. Um, so... 
this the COVID-19 situation has really put a monkey wrench and all that because we don't know when everything's going to get started back up again. And once it does, you, there's a, almost like a log jam of properties to be worked on. You don't know what's going to get attention, what's not going to get attention if something's going to get lost by the wayside. And that's made investing in independent comics, especially ones kind of in that limbo situation, difficult. It's a lot easier and kind of more attractive to invest in a new situation like the boom first look deal with Netflix than it is to look at something that's existing. But I cannot deny Gideon Falls is an amazing book. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. It's one and the uh, Andrea Sorrentino's art, and it's gorgeous. fantastic. Yeah, it's it's a great team, the two of them together. Um, so this is a fantastic book. And when it got optioned, there's no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen. When it did, uh, we saw the prices that this book kind of hit, and it's got kind of a perfect storm. Uh, the, it's it's got a team behind it in Hive Mind Productions who aided in the option process. They're the production team. They're headed by Dinesh Shamdasani, the former uh, CEO and kind of re-founder of Valiant Comics, who has really made a name for himself now on the production and film side with Netflix's Witcher, as well as um, the Bloodshot film from Sony, which, you know, while it got early, like low Rotten Tomatoes scores, um, anybody who has seen it has kind of walked away with the opinion of, wow, that movie was pretty good. Uh, so you know, I think he's got a, a kind of a, a low key win in Hollywood for that one. I'm really faithful and bullish to that team. And I think that they're going to be able to put together a, a presentation of Gideon Falls when this is all said and done that I think is going to be, um, on the attention of a lot of collectors. So this book is going to spike again, it's inevitable. And the whole indie market is so low. It may be tough to invest right now, but it's all about picking and choosing your spots. This is one I don't mind picking. This is one of the first, the few you're going to see kind of like in the first 10 lists um, that we present. So um, Gideon Falls, it's one I, I'm paying attention to. Any of the covers, to be honest with you, but my favorite are the cover A and the Virgin cover. And then hitting us at our top spot. So good we couldn't just put one book. We got a trifecta of books this week. And we are talking about Swamp Thing, issues number 49, 50, and annual number two. And this comes right on the heels of Justice League Dark News, right? Yeah, man. I got to break KFAB with them right now, right? So we pre-made these lists. There's several lists made in advance. Um, yeah, we got about three weeks in advance. Yeah, so we've been targeting certain books. Um, I was very excited about my smart play on Justice League Dark this week that I was going to be able to talk about, um, you know, how there's no way they, that this property could not be a movie or a television show. It's just, it's got everything that's popular cinematically with horror. It's got the superhero element. Um, it's got anti-heroes because that's what's popular right now. It's not these like blue blood baby faces but people want that character that bad boy who kind of goes good and that's what you get with constantine that's what you get with swamp thing you know that's what you really get with these characters and uh for 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 that reason i was all excited to talk about this and the convoluted nature of the first appearance only aids into the low buying but Got beat to the punch, Brian. HBO Max, this is going down. The news cycle moves fast when there's no news and one story hits. You ain't lying, brother. So these books are have exploded, but I'm noticing some things. Um, the news cycle moves so fast that within a week, we've already seen slight drops. Not big, but slight. Um, now, these books, when we were in Baltimore, Brian, I don't know if you remember, but I walked up to you and I was like, man, people are selling the first Justice League Darks for $5. That's what that's come to. And you and I talked about that. We were both like, man, we, I still like that book. Um, so I ended up grabbing a set while we were in Baltimore. But I could have bought like five of them. But I was such a bonehead. I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe these aren't anything right now. And you always kind of think you'll get them later. And now these books are going for $49.50, hitting about $25 to $30 each. Uh, annual two hitting about $20. Um, which I still think they have room to grow. But I really believe, and this is the value of this list, is not everything on this list you want to react to when the list comes out. I'm not advocating that. I'm saying these are the books to be on the lookout for. Yeah. Keep, in your, keep in your notebook. Absolutely. This is, this is our checklist of books that like make us go, 
hmm. And we're looking and we're paying attention and we're trying to strike when the moment's right. Now, when the moment's right on these books is probably not right now. It's definitely not right now because they're being talked about. They're on the upside of three up, three down. That's not when you want to buy. You want to buy on that downside. But it's inevitable due to the spec cycle, due to the flow of information that these books in a month or so will be back down to earth. Maybe not the $5 range, maybe 15 maybe 12 but that's when you go and you pounce and you buy. All three of these books are great buys, as is Justice League 1 from New 52, first and second print. But um, the this is one of those things where the reason, if you're curious why we have three books on the list, because this is debated, what's the first appearance of the Justice League Dark? I think the reality is it's Justice League Dark number one, because that's the only time they're actually called that. And this is really just the fact that the characters from Justice League Dark come together in these issues. But either way, don't play comics politics. Buy them all when they're cheap uh, and sell them all to somebody else who's playing politics on one of the others. And these are must-haves in the collection because while Justice League Dark may be a niche fringe team now, I really believe that they are going to become a mainstay in the comics community in the future. Yeah, like we've talked about this before. These books were hot a couple years ago back when Guillermo del Toro was supposed yes. to be directing a movie. And just from a reader view, we talk about that. You've talked about the new 52. If the, the newer Justice League Dark series that's been going around right now, that's been a good read also. So if you're looking for a great read, definitely check that out and pick that up because you never know what storylines might. They might start with those stories with the, with the new 52 and stuff, but you never know how fast they accelerate. You saw that with the CW shows where – they were coming up to the current timeline real quick. And some of those storylines are, are great for that ad adaptation, but I'm just saying it's a good read as well. And then there you have it. The number one on our list kind of, I'll say we cheated, but it's not really a cheat. They're all paired together, but it's three books, the trifecta for you. Let us know in the comments, guys, what'd you think of this list this week? As we always say that full list is also on simplemanscomics.com. Click the link there and it'll take you out to all, all the available copies on eBay. It's not our eBay store. It's, it's just a search for that title across all of eBay for all available copies. So you can click the links and, and buy them there. Um, and with that, Jack, great list again. Hopefully next week's list, which has already been written, won't have any news that pops, pops your cherry on there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we won't get usurped by the, uh, the news cycle. Yes, because we also take pride in this list. We try to do it different than a lot of other lists that are out there. A list that has some meat on the bone that you guys can actually buy yes. and put into your collection that's not reactive for stuff that's already spiked too much. But either way, guys, this is Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and next week we'll hit you with another Back 10 Issues. So thanks for watching.